and the other one in the other tower. Well, the, the wall is all about remembering, as is that flag that you're looking at live at the Pentagon. What we're about to do is something we have done every year since September the 11th, 2001. We're going to uh, show you a 20-minute package of what happened 17 years ago today. And some of the images are so powerful and so disturbing. Mm -hmm. You were just talking to Bernie Carrick about the people jumping. You're going to see that. You're also going to see something we only show once a year, and that is the towers falling. Because keep in mind, back then, 17 years ago, the conventional wisdom was that there were 25,000 people mm -hmm. inside the towers at right. that That's time. That's right. I was actually in local news at that time. You guys were here at the Fox studio with Edie right. Hill, and y'all were covering it live. Right. We didn't know exactly what was unfolding. We later would find out uh, all too much what happened. This is how it happened. very tragic alert for you right now. An incredible plane crash into the World Trade Center here at the uh, lower tip of Manhattan. It's believed a 737 has crashed into this speculation at this point, but at least three floors taken out, crashed into the side of the building. Joining us right now, uh, one of the producers with Fox Report, Owen Mugen on the scene. Owen, what do you know? What do you see? Where are you? Yeah, Ryan, I'm on the roof of my building, which is about five blocks to the south of the World Trade Center. I'm looking. <laughs> I'm looking right now at the World Trade Center. There's a massive gaping hole uh, on the second tower. It's about uh, about 15 stories from the roof. Uh, it's it's just unbelievable to look at. I seen that jet go right in. You can just see it right now. You can see uh, emergency vehicles tearing mm -hmm. south from the West Side Highway, Is heading towards person? the scene. Uh, there are tons of people in the streets. There's there are papers, things fluttering out. Uh, I can't see any evidence of what it was that could have crashed. Uh, all I can see is just this massive gaping hole with tons of black smoke going out, falling out of the building. All we can do is stare aghast at these pictures at this point. You are looking at the uh, north building of the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center in Manhattan. These are coming to you live now. Debris raining down from 110 floors up. As you can see, this is a clear blue sky day in Manhattan. If this was an accident, it would be a needle in a haystack kind of accident. There was another one. We just saw, we just saw another one. We just saw another one apparently go Another plane just flew what? into the second tower. This raises, this has to be deliberate, folks. We just saw on live television as a second plane flew into the second tower of the World Trade Center. Now, given what has been going on around the world, um, some, of the, some of the key suspects come to mind, Osama bin Laden, who knows, who knows what? Eric Sean is with us. Eric, I know you have a lot of sources at the FBI and other agencies like that. What can you tell us? Well, first, I apologize for being out of breath because I was walking down Fifth Avenue, uh, which is close to our studios, and I heard a, uh, a jet, uh, perhaps a 737 or a small Airbus, uh, flying low, unusually low over Fifth Avenue, making a right. I'm not going to say, I don't know, I don't have any reports on what type of plane hit the World Trade Center, but people looked up and it made a, a right toward the, uh, toward the building. Nice and orderly, nice and orderly. It is a tragedy, it is abhorrent, it is disgusting, but... Do I, I, I'm, you know, wondering, are these pilots 
terrorists themselves? Uh, are they uh, are, is, are there terrorists in the cockpit who are holding guns to a pilot's head? Did they? Uh, I, shoot I can't the imagine. You can, you can speculate uh, completely about how this happens because obviously it takes uh, a lot of training and expertise to fly a uh, complicated sophisticated uh, aircraft whether it's a Boeing 737 or a smaller Airbus these are not uh, little Cessnas and little Pipers so uh, there is a you have have to wonder and raise the what possibility there is with the type of scenario that was going on in the cockpit our Wendell Golder is at the White House uh, rather make that Sarasota he is traveling with the president Wendell Golder what's the reaction uh, from uh, the president John, the president is here uh, promoting a reading initiative on the uh, second day of a two-day trip to Florida. He just finished uh, reading to some children at the Emma Booker Elementary School and was asked uh, about the incident. He said he was aware of it and that he uh, uh, would have something to say about it later. Let's bring in uh, David Lee Miller, our correspondent. Uh, he has uh, an eyewitness with him. David Lee, what can you tell us? Good morning, John. I'm a few blocks from the World Trade Center right now. As you would expect, all the roadways are pretty much cut off. The only way to get near the buildings is on foot right now. Uh, the scene is absolutely a horrific one. You have people streaming out of the area. You've got people literally in tears and shock. People that just worked in the nearby buildings that cannot believe what has happened. Still many of them remember the uh, terrorist attack years ago in the World Trade Center. And many of them, this is just an ugly reminder of that, although the details of what happened here are not certain. As I was walking downtown in Lower Manhattan, making my way to the uh, World Trade Centers, I stopped to speak to Sylvia Fuentes. She's with me right now. We're a few blocks away from the building. She works in Lower Manhattan. She used to work in the Trade Center. And uh, I'm going to actually hand her the telephone right now, and she's going to describe for us what she saw this morning as uh, she was arriving at work. Sylvia? I heard a loud rumbling, and when I walked out of the deli on Fulton Street, I looked up in the air. There was an airplane actually going into the World Trade Center, and flames were coming out, and smoke was just billowing in the air, and tons of people were running down Fulton Street, just running each other over, and I made my way back to my office on Water Street, and when I got upstairs, I looked out my window to see what was going on, and the second World Trade Center just went into flames just at, from one minute to the next. Sylvia, thanks for that eyewitness report. When we saw that second plane slam into the second tower intentionally, quite clearly, uh, you, you gotta believe this is a terrorist attack. Harvey Kushner is on the line with us. He's a frequent guest of ours and a terrorism expert. Harvey, is it too early to speculate about suspects? One thinks only that this could be the most horrifically planned incident you know, in the annals of terrorism against the United States. Uh, think about it. I mean, uh, uh, you look outside the Fox Studios, look how clear it is. I mean, how could you miss the, the, the true the trade towers? I right. mean, not, not just one, but two planes? Well, and, and, and it brings to mind, you know, everybody hates those metal detectors at airports, and everybody <laughs> makes uh, uh, passing through them almost a joke these days. But clearly, uh, it seems that something is going to change if you can make this kind of a statement and, and kill as many people as are likely to be dead in this kind of scenario. Yeah, you know, John, uh, you know, we're talking about terrorism. No matter wh how this turns out, uh, this is going to be a day that's going to live in infamy. And, you know, it's going to cause changes in terms of if it turns out to terrorism, in terms of security like this country has never seen before. President Bush is about to speak. He's in Florida. That was what was supposed to be a joyous event at an elementary school. Let's listen in. Uh, today we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. I have spoken to the Vice President, to the Governor of New York, to the Director of the FBI, and I've ordered that the full resources of the federal government uh, go to help the victims and their families and, the, and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. Terrorism against our nation will not stand.
And now if you join me in a moment of silence. May God bless the victims, their families, and America. Thank you very much. We are, we are going to be looking at an enormous death toll. 50,000 people work in those two buildings. Sergeant Churchill on here. John Fund from the Wall Street Journal is on the phone with us. Uh, John, were you in the area when the planes hit? I was across the street in my office building. What did you see? What did you hear? I heard, a, I heard an incredible sonic boom and uh, looked up and there were already much smoke and flames pouring out of the building. And about 15 minutes later, of course, the second sonic boom, which of course would have been the second tower and the second plane. What about injuries, John? Well, Can you tell the most, us? The most terrible and heart-rending thing about this is about 15 minutes ago, bodies started dropping from the top floors of the uh, tower closest to the highway, about at least five or six, and uh, it, was, it was absolutely terrible. Obviously, they had two choices, to be burned into, in flames or to uh, leap and end it all. It was quite tragic. Let me bring into the conversation David Asman, uh, my colleague. Yes, John Scott, David, what I, can you tell I us? I just want to... Uh, give you some late breaking information perhaps one of the things that is of greatest fear is that there is yet another terrorist attack since those since those two plane crashes happened within 20 minutes of each other well all of manhattan has been sealed off this is probably unprecedented of course all of this is unprecedented in this dastardly dastardly occasion but manhattan has been sealed off uh, the hudson river bridges and the tunnels have been sealed uh, clearly, there is an attempt right now to thwart any further act of terrorism, act of violence against the people of Manhattan. So Manhattan is in a lockdown. We we are hearing right now of another explosion that have ta has taken place at the Pentagon. We have the heart of the financial district of America being attacked. Now we understand that there is an explosion, there has been an explosion in the Pentagon, the heart of the military uh, command center of the United States of America, John. It can't get much worse than this, let's hope. You gotta believe that uh, it has happened again. Another large airliner, perhaps hijacked, perhaps part of some uh, widespread plan, apparently slamming into at least the area around the Pentagon. They have not struck at America. Uh, they have struck at some individual places in America. Uh, but. Uh, uh, this country will go on. I want to go to our Washington managing editor, Britt Hume, who has uh, the outlook from the nation's capital. Britt, this raises all kinds of questions about America's response, and I guess that a response is not going to be immediate, is it? Well, whether it is immediate or not, the one thing I think we are seeing, John, is this uh, series of evacuations from various uh, buildings around Washington. And I think it's important to say that we don't know and have no reason to believe that the White House, for example, was uh, facing any immediate or imminent threat. The same is true on Capitol Hill, where it appears they will be evacuating uh, the building up here soon. No, uh, nothing has happened at either of those places. Uh, this, of course, though, John, I think this is one of these days where we can say that things will not again be the same in the United States of America. This is the kind of terrorist attack that is the nightmare that uh, experts and others have warned about, uh, but some of us may have thought really could not happen on such a scale. This is quite remarkable. As we watch these pictures, the World Trade Center, 110 stories, literally starting to fall. I live. It's coming down on me. Here it comes. I'm getting behind a car. 
had to go find people who need help. So I don't think I'm one of them. You okay, sir? Okay. Can I just get a toot off your respirator? We was inside the building. You were inside the World Trade Center? Inside the building. Doing what? Getting ready to go upstairs to search and the floor gave away. The whole building collapsed on us. How did you guys get out? Just found our way out, struggled our way through. Walk towards the light. Walk towards the light. We walked towards, we walked towards the light. That's all we did. Hello? Yeah, David Lee, what can you tell us? John, uh, the scene is horrific. One of the two towers literally collapsed. I was making my way to the foot of the World Trade Center suddenly while talking to an officer who was questioning me about my press credentials. We heard a very loud blast and explosion. We looked up and the uh, building literally began to collapse before us. There was uh, debris falling, uh, I'd say at least three quarters the height of the building. People within uh, the entire perimeter began literally, including myself, which is why I'm out of breath, to run for our lives. Those steel girders, strong as they are, had a lot of weight to support, and apparently, I'm just, uh, I'm not a structural engineer, but I'm, I'm just guessing now that they gave way. The loss of life here is going to be enormous. May, may uh, God help those who are there, and the victims and their families, uh, and all the souls that are lost today. Can you tell me what you saw, what you heard? So no, you all right? Yeah. All right, thank you. Look at this guy. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. This poor woman. Wow. The United 93, Cleveland, do you still hear the center? United 93, do you still hear Cleveland? United 93, United 93, do you hear Cleveland? 80 miles southwest of Pittsburgh, this uh, United Airlines Flight 93 crashed. Now, from the size of the impact crater, it would appear as of the angle of descent or angle of attack had to be nearly straight in. I think the pilot downed the plane in a remote area because, you know, there wasn't very many houses over there where it went down. And I don't know, it's, it's really... The whole thing is just unbelievable. This is clearly a national catastrophe. There will be some response from the White House. Let's go to Wendell Goler, who was traveling with the president in uh, Sarasota, Florida, and find out what the latest is there. Wendell? John, the president left Sarasota, Florida. Air Force One uh, took off just a short while ago to convene a meeting of his national security advisors, including the vice president, the heads of the CIA, the National Security Agency, and the FBI, and also New York Governor Pataki. After the two attacks uh, on, on the Twin Towers in New York, he was briefed by his national security advisor, uh, Condoleezza Rice, who phoned him after the first attack. Mr. Bush was actually reading to some children when uh, the second second attack occurred, Chief of Staff Andy Card interrupted him, told him about the attack. It was clear at that point we were dealing with terrorists. I want to bring into the uh, conversation uh, General Al Haig, the former Secretary of State. Now, General Haig, at a time like this, what, how does America respond prudently with the proper amount of caution and, and yet with, with whatever force needs to be applied? Well, first, we have to know the, the full limits of this tragedy, and it's unprecedented, of course. Uh, but we have to stay, above all, united and calm and ready to take resolute action, which sometimes we have failed to do in the recent past, when the perpetrators are, are uncovered. And we have many, many uh, indicators of precisely who they are. Uh, this was too broadly based a terrorist act to be just a, a few crazies. This is a, a terrorist movement, and we know where they're, where they're located today. And obviously, as a nation, we're going to have to take action against them.